What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to talk about fountain pens again, but we're not really gonna talk about fountain pens. We're gonna talk about paper. Um, obviously, I, I've not been into fountain pen stuff for very long, so this is a whole learning process for me, but obviously it gets super nerdy, so it's kind of fun. And one of the things about fountain pens is the way they work. The capillary action of the ink coming out of the pen being drawn out of the ink pen, really, and onto the paper. Surface tension of ink, all that sort of stuff. So the difference between like a ballpoint and a fountain pen is a ballpoint is a rolling ball that has a gel that as you push the ball across the paper, it just, it's like a, like a rollerball deodorant sort of, and it just pulls the material out of the pen and then it spreads it, smears it on the paper. A fountain pen doesn't work like that. A fountain pen has a whole lot thinner ink and it's usually water-based. And basically what happens is the dyes that are mixed in with the water um, get drawn out from like, almost like if you take a, a paper towel and you put it on some water that you spilled, it draws up the ink, you know, draws up the water. The paper is kind of like that towel. It draws the ink out of the pen. The problem is, is that since the ink is so much thinner, um, it doesn't act like, it doesn't act like gel ink, like you would find in a rollerball, and it doesn't act like oil-based ink like you would find in a ballpoint. So if you use regular copy paper like this, it doesn't look very good. Not only doesn't it look very good, but you also don't get a lot of the cool effects that you would get out of various inks. Um, colors, sheens, shading, shimmer, various, all this fun stuff that you can do with ink doesn't really happen that much with regular copier paper because the ink doesn't act right. So I'm gonna show you, I've got a piece of copier paper here obviously, but I've also got some good paper over here that is fountain pen friendly that I have tried and that I like. And what I found is I don't actually like all the paper for all for everything. It's like different kinds of paper for different stuff, which is so, super nerdy, but it's kind of fun. So let's get over here. I'm gonna show you what they are I'll leave links to them in the description so you can buy them if you like them and tell you a little bit about how it all works. So um, if you're into this stuff already, you are probably completely beyond this. But for those of you that aren't, and for me to just kind of think and talk it out loud, uh, this is helpful for me too. So to just keep learning. Anyway, if you're new to this, get in the comments and say hello. If you're not new to this, say hello anyway. All right, let me show you, uh, let me show you some paper. All right. So first I wanna show you kind of uh, bad paper. So not bad paper, but just paper that's not awesome for fountain pens. This is uh, my Carolina Pen Company, Charleston, that I got at the um, Atlanta Pen Show. And this is just copier paper. But what I wanna show you is let's just make some lines on this paper, okay? Make some straight lines. We'll draw, we'll go slow, we'll go fast. We'll write my name, how about that? Uh, let's see, let's make a block of ink, like something like here. All right, and then I'll tell you what ink this is. This is Diamine Pelham Blue. And yes, if you're on my guitar channel, you'll know what that is, because this is actually a Gibson special edition color. Let's make some more lines, okay? Just, just normal writing pressure, nothing major, just normal stuff. Now the only thing that we've done kind of out of the ordinary is this guy right here, okay? Now what we wanna look at here that this does is you can see all this, what they call feathering. So you see how the ink, because like we talked about, it's water-based, so it's, wa it's thinner. So it goes into this paper and it spreads out. And you see how, I'll get uh, some macro shots of this to show you how jaggedy this is. Um, these lines are not, even if I just go like this, they end up being super jaggedy and, 
and, and rough because the paper is allowing the ink to feather out and just spread out. Like it goes into the paper like a sponge and then spreads out. Um, the other thing is that this ink is much more expressive than this paper allows it to be. This color is actually very, very cool. On really good paper, you can see a bunch of different variations. So when, when you write, um, you instinctively slow down at the end of a stroke. So there will be heavier ink down here at the end and lighter ink in the middle of the stroke and heavier at the beginning. So when you do something like write your name or write a letter, there will be um, normal handwriting, there will be lights and darks and variations in the ink. With this paper, it just looks all the same because it's just soaking into the paper at this uniform rate and it's just not letting the ink do what it wants to do or what it should do or what it could do, I guess, potential-wise. We flip it over and here's another thing. We see bleed through at the, remember we talked about all those little heavy ends and beginnings of strokes? So it's bleeding through the paper and it's ghosting where, you, where it doesn't bleed through. You can still see ghosting through the paper. So it's just not good fountain pen paper, which, you know, that's to be expected because it's not designed for fountain pens. It's not designed for thinner, um, you know, copier paper is not designed, it's basically a powder, more or less. Um, so it's not designed for thin liquids, which is what fountain pen ink is. So let's get some cool, good inks, in, or good papers in here that we use on a, that, you know, me, Leslie, Brianna, we all use this stuff on a regular basis. Um, I like this Maraman Namasini paper for just general writing purposes, okay? So this is a five millimeter dot grid. Um, and when you feel this, I can't obviously tell you how this feels or, or demonstrate how this feels to you, but this is, um, it, you know how, I, I guess what I would say is copier paper feels like construction paper in comparison to this. It's very rough and very felty, like paper bits, right? This has got a coating on it. And so it's very smooth, um, but it's not slick, but it's just very smooth. So let's go ahead and write some of the same stuff that we wrote on that other paper. And again, I will get you macro shots uh, of this. We'll kind of just do the same thing, okay? And let's just fill that in a little bit. And we'll just, we'll, we'll just kind of write the same stuff on all of this stuff. Diamine, Pelham Blue. Okay, so already, and I, you might even be able to see it from your angle there, but I'll get you some good shots of this. You can see variations in the color. First of all, these lines are super crisp, nice and crisp. And um, the they're, they're not feathering out, right? And we've got some really neat things here. It's lighter at the top of this line and it's darker at the bottom. So you get like a burst through it. Uh, same thing with this D here. Same thing with the Y, the L and, a, and the A. Okay. And you can see from one end to the other, depending on the density of the ink, if we go real light up here and then we go heavier, heavier, heavier here, as that dries, you will be able to see differences in density of the ink because the ink staying on top of the paper. You can even see the ink color change as it dries because the ink is staying on top of the paper and it's allowing it to flow around and do what it wants to do. Now let's flip the page over. We have a little bit of ghosting in the most heavy place. See there? But for the most part, uh, you could write on both sides of this paper. There's no bleed through whatsoever, not at all. Um, and this paper dries pretty quickly. Some paper, uh, it allows the ink to sit there so long that it is slower drying. So this is Maraman Namasini paper. I'll leave a link to all these papers below if you wanna try them. This is my favorite general writing paper. This and probably Rhodia. Let's show you Rhodia next. Five millimeter dot grid, we'll do, let's just do exactly the same thing. And we'll just make these. And what you might be able to see, and once we get done, I'll put um, B-roll over this and we'll kind of try to do like a, um, 
direct comparison so you can see that sometimes the colors even express differently on different papers um, and they just yeah man that looks cool this is probably one of the best behaved and when, when you see people do ink swatching uh, videos and they do various um, testing of nibs and testing of fountain pens and stuff Rhodia 80 gram seems to be the the one uh, that most people use so let's go ahead and pull this out flip it over and same thing we have a little ghosting here because we and it probably ghosts maybe a little bit more than this paper actually um, but no bleed through you could very easily, if you were just making notes for the day and lists for the day, you could write on both sides of that paper pretty well. Um, and yeah, it's pretty cool. This is, I think this is 90 gram or 100, and this is 80. This paper's a little thicker. Um, but yeah, so this is Japanese paper. Rhodia is made by Claire Fontaine, which is French. And this is really high quality paper as well. Um, Claire Fontaine also, has a new paper that just came out um, that I got from uh, Goulet. And this paper is interesting because usually 100% recycled paper doesn't work very well for fountain pens. But this paper uh, is pretty awesome. I really like this paper. Um, what I like about this paper is, is it might not have any amazing um, like qualities that make it stand out in any one direction, um, but it does everything relatively well. Uh, it, I just really like it a lot. Um, do our little scribble here like we did on the other ones. Uh, this paper has a little more texture. It feels a little more conventional for those of you that are um, used to other types of paper, the normal paper. It's a little more, it's got a little more texture to it, which when it means when you write, it gives you a little bit more feedback. Sometimes when paper is really, really slick, it actually makes you roll, run away with it, where this kind of just gives you some nice, I don't want to say friction because that's the wrong word, um, but that feedback that you like to have where you, it just feels, um, eh, you can feel the paper and, and I really like it. And this is again, just a general use for everything kind of notepad. I really like it. This is uh, eight millimeter. So if you write with a broader nib, you can have a little bit more room than the five millimeter dot grid we were just looking at. Um, and then if we look at the opposite side of this paper, you can see almost no ghosting or none really, except for that one spot where we soaked it up really, um, and no bleed through at all. You could use both sides of this paper with relative ease, having no problems. Um, and it really does, it may not express the color the same way as Marmon Namasini, the first paper we showed you, but it's pretty good. It still does it very well just maybe not to the perfect extent. Um, again, we'll get you some side-by-side B-roll of those. But yes, I really, I really, really like, I really like this paper. Um, for a do-it-all, everything, don't have to, and what I've also found is different inks, different nib sizes, different everything, this paper just kind of does it all. In fact, all three of these papers up to this point, they just kind of do it all. Now, this is a notebook, um, Evoke Notebook by Samruti Pens. This is a place that we like to get a lot of our stuff from out of Nashville. In fact, they're in the process of moving um, to Atlanta right now. Um, but you see here where it says Tomeway River paper, 52 grams uh, per square meter. Uh, what we've not covered up until this point is that a lot of these brands of paper, so, Marmon Nemosini, Rhodia, Claire Fontaine, and now Tomoe River um, can be found in a lot of other notebooks. Um, they may not be 
it might not, you know, like you go get a Mead notebook at the office supply store and it's a Mead notebook. This brand of paper in a couple of different weights can be found in many brands, sub brands or private labeled or whatever notepads. So a lot of times they'll, you know, for example, Goulet has a Goulet notebook with Tomway River paper in it. So there's a whole bunch of different things, uh, ways that you can get this stuff from various vendors. You just have to ask, uh, once you know what your favorite papers are and what you use them for, um, then, then it makes sense. Now this is 52 gram paper. This is really, really thin. But Tomoe River is absolutely phenomenal to write on. The reason it's so awesome to write on is because it actually keeps the paper, the it keeps the ink on top of the paper the longest. Um, in fact, if I go like this, see I'm, already, I'm smearing the page and I already, I, I made that line already. Let's make some new ones for our comparison. Um, this ink will not um, feather on this page. It will show you all kinds of color, sheens, shimmers, um, all kinds of things that you will not see on other papers. If you want to see what your ink can do, you do it on Tomoe River paper. It is absolutely the coolest. But the downside, there's two downsides to it. One is it takes a long time for it to dry. So if you're going to flip a page over, it's nice to have a blotter in between. Um, because you can run into this, okay? Uh, the other thing is because it is so thin, it doesn't, it's not that it bleeds through, because it doesn't. It doesn't bleed through at all. That's zero bleed through. But the ghosting is not necessarily because of the ink coming through the paper, but the paper is just so thin. I mean, you can see my hand, you know, through there. It's just the paper's so thin. So with this page, this paper, see, look at there, it's still blotting onto the last page and uh, it's been, a, you know, 30 seconds since we wrote it with it. So th the cool thing about this paper is it does express so well the ink. It's so nice to write on. It's so smooth. And if you want to know what a cool color does, then this is the paper to de demonstrate it. However, the chances are, if you have a flat notebook like this, you're only going to write on one side. Then you're going to flip it over and you're going to write on this side again. You're not going to write on the back side of the paper. Now I do, um, but I put my serious writing on here. And then if I need to doodle something or I need to do some math or whatever, this is just kind of my doodle side page. And I actually do all my serious writing on the right. So, you know, you're writing along, you're doing some stuff, making a shopping list, thinking blah, blah, blah. Oh, I forgot one thing. And I just write it over there just kind of as a scratch paper. But for any serious writing, I always stay on the right side with this paper. Just gives you a little idea on paper. I, and here's the thing about it. Every ink, every pen nib size, everything kind of just acts differently. And it's really fun to explore this stuff. I've found, um, I don't typically write or journal generally on Tomoe River. I write it on Tomoe River when I, the thin stuff, when I want to see what an ink looks like and how pretty it is and how sparkly it is or how sheeny it is or how shady it is or whatever. That when I want to see the expression of the ink and that's why I'm writing, then that's when I use Tomoe River. These other ones I use for a lot of general use. Um, if I'm not sure on a particular ink, I will use the Forever Notebook because I know it will behave in there or a new nib that I've not tried on a pen before. Um, I usually have, uh, my to-go notebook usually has a Maraman Namasani paper uh, in it because it also works well with pencil and I scratch, uh, sketch a lot with my mechanical pencil. So I do like this. It's not so slick that it won't work with a pencil. And then my Rhodia pad typically lives on my desk uh, so that I'm making to-do lists and taking notes and stuff like that on, on there because it's a general use paper as well. So uh, there you go, a little rundown of paper. Uh, I'll leave links to it all in the description or at least as much of it as I can or a version of it with the, that contains these papers. 
That's all I got. That's as nerdy as I can be today. Thanks for hanging out. Do me a favor. Subscribe, like, do all the things. We'll see you in the next video.